on the shores of the Pacific at a tiny research institute. The Information Sciences Institute, which we know as ISI, we tried to figure out how to connect every person in the world with a digital identity and access to each other's knowledge. The atmosphere was a lot of people wanted to do good work, solve a particular piece of the puzzle, and have the whole puzzle be, when assembled, be a kind of utopian view of how networking should happen. How could computers interact with each other in interesting ways? Because people do that all the time, and maybe computers could do it in interesting ways. The founders of the internet, they weren't just implementing arbitrary protocols. There was an architecture, there were principles. FaceTime on your iPhone is using the session initiation protocol. Netflix is running the real-time transport protocol. ISI was formed because of the Pentagon Papers. Uh, Daniel Ellsberg worked for the Rand Corporation, where all of the founders came from. The Nixon White House was very upset that those papers were leaked. ARPA said to Keith Unkerfer, who was running the computer science department at Rand, find another place to operate and take you know your best people with you. And he does. So USC ends up housing the Information Sciences Institute in Marina del Rey. They've got some of the best computer scientists in the world at ISI. The leadership at the university understood the importance of computer science and was able to extrapolate into the future and was able to respond very quickly to the opportunity that came to be. We were known as the engineers of the internet. There was some crazy guys at ISI. Look at Postel. You've seen the pictures of Postel, right? He was so deeply involved in the technical aspects of the internet, and yet he was the kind of guy who was bearded and wore sandals. He was a resident hippie. One of the people that ISI hired was a fellow named Danny Cohn. He created Moses, which allowed people to start doing chip design remotely. You know, I talked to colleagues all over the country, many of them have told me about their experiences using Moses. Uh, it, it really was part of this whole revolution. It's known as the Information Superhighway, a vast network of linked computers bringing the world directly into your home and business. Everybody goes crazy because suddenly the internet looks like a magazine. And welcome to this, the internet. We find that the internet and the World Wide Web, they are powerful amplifiers. So we have this amplification problem where we amplify bad stuff and good stuff equally. High alert in New York tonight for cyber attacks. That's the designation from high-ranking officials who say it is time to be There was a major hack taking place on Twitter targeting prominent accounts. It's all part of a Bitcoin scam. It is often said that truth is the first casualty in any war. It's not the case that nobody thought about cybersecurity on day one, but it is the case that some decisions were made either formally or implicitly to not put a lot of weight on it in day one on the thought that maybe it would be better to get something working. When people say, why didn't you have state-of-the-art security in the DNS way back when, when you designed it? I said, well, the Wright brothers didn't have a drink cart or a toilet in their first airplane. We've created a cybersecurity experimentation test bed that can model what the real internet looks like and allow researchers to bring new cybersecurity solutions. So we have a project right now uh, called Civil Sanctuaries, where what we're trying to do is we're trying to deploy chatbots online to contend with uh, the folks who are making the most noise, who are you know, spreading the most invective online, but also to spread truth. One of the great things about ISI is that it gives you the opportunity to work on the problems that you want to work on. These have all been like the kind of problem areas that uh, AI or artificial intelligence has worked in. Problems that have that characteristic, that are exciting, that feel just at the edge of the doable. How 
is memory stored in the brain. This is the most amazing set of movement data that you could possibly get. We just showed like, oh, there's a bunch of insight you can get out of this data. We want AI to be like humans, but we don't want AI to have the bad side of the humans. The most gratifying project I worked on was uh, the DIG project, so it stands for Domain Specific Inside Graphs. So the problem domain that we worked on was human trafficking. The AI takes in millions of advertisements, it takes all this information out, and then it makes it available to law enforcement in a search engine. We have detected gravitational waves. We did it. I started collaborating with them um, almost from the very beginning when I joined ISI. And the scientists worked for a number of months to use Pegasus to automate the computations that they needed to do. And uh, yes, indeed, they were able to confirm with a high level of certainty that they detected uh, a gravitational wave uh, coming from the collision of two black holes. Technology needs to understand human values, to understand human reactions, and moods and emotions, and our fundamental human experience. Not everything in life can be described by numbers and equations. We need to be able to see in people what we cannot write in code.